Get your Bibles in your hand. Say, this is my Bible. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. My mind's alert. My heart's receptive to receive the uncompromising, the unchanging, the infallible seed of the Word of God. For this is God's Word speaking to me. I'm going to be a doer of the Word and not a hearer only. He may be seated. God is good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Man, I love coming to church on Wednesday night. Getting into the word, getting stronger in the word. Hallelujah. Um, last week I said that we're going to get into Naaman. And we will get there about the story of Naaman. But while I was studying it, I started looking at the spirit of Elisha. And um, Elisha was the one that told uh, Naaman to go uh, dip into the river seven times and his leprosy will be gone. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to talk to you tonight and start a series. I don't know how long it's going to be, but it won't be, be just tonight. But we're going to talk about the spirit of Elisha. Not Elijah, but Elisha. Now, we can talk about Elijah because I'm going to set the stage for you. And Because uh, when Elisha came on the scene, it was right after the, I call it the Battle of Mount Carmel. Um, you remember when uh, Elijah propositioned Ahab and Jezebel. They were the leaders of Israel at the time. And they had brought in um, idolatry where they were worshiping. The God that they worshiped was Baal, B-A-A-L. And there was a, a lot of idolatry, a lot of worshiping false gods. And Elijah propositioned Ahab and said, why don't you bring all of your false, or he did call, he said, why don't you bring all your prophets of Baal, and then I'm going to bring my God, and we're going to go to Mount Carmel, and we're going to see who the real true God is. And of course, you remember the story, they, 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 they killed a couple bulls, they built an altar, and they said that um, you can put wood around it, you can build an offering, and whoever, which, whoever's God lights the fire or lights the altar for the offering, that is going to be the one true God. Amen. And of course, um, Elijah allowed the, uh, Ahab to go first with his God of Baal. And four, now remember, 450 false prophets was with him. And they was all praying and interceding. And they were praying for this fire to light, you know. And, of course, it, the hours went by and it never did light. But Elijah said, now it's my turn. my turn. So he said, you know what? I'll tell you what. Just pour water all over it. Make it a little more difficult. Just pour water on it. I think he went back two or three times and poured water all over the altar. And, of course, when he prayed, fire came down from heaven and lit the altar. And uh, so anyway, but uh, if you remember the story went on, uh, the, uh, the people got excited and they actually took the 450 prophets down to the river and slayed them and killed them with the sword. So that's kind of where we want to pick up uh, on that. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 4. And this is picking up pretty close to right after this had happened. And, of course, we know Jezebel was Ahab's wife. And he said, And Ahab went and told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Now, I didn't ever understand. <laughs> he just faced 450 false prophets. Here comes a woman sending a message that I'm going to kill you, basically. You're going to be a, a wanton man. I'm going to get you by tomorrow at this time. But it says, and when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. So he left the country and left his servant there. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey further into Judah, into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom straw or under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might, what? That he might die. And he said, it is enough now, Lord, take my life. I am no better than my father's. 
So obviously Elijah was having a breakdown. He was having a pity party. He was feeling sorry for himself. I guess he thought everything would immediately change and everybody would recognize that there's only one true God. And then, but uh, it, it didn't happen. And so he was, uh, he was having a pity party. So if you remember, during this pity party, he was there for days. And the angels came to him and they fed him. And they also didn't only feed him, but they encouraged him. So after a while, he got and he made his way to the cave. And while he was in the cave, the Holy Spirit or the Lord come to him and told him that he was to go and he was going to anoint his successor, which was Elisha, which was the son of Shaphat. And of course, he was going to announce, I think, Jehazel, I think, was one of them. But it was three he was going to announce. But the, the one I want to talk to you about in the night is he anointed was Elisha. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 19. So Elijah departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. And what was Elisha doing? He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. He was in the field. He was working. And he was with the twelfth of the oxen. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Now notice, Elijah found Elisha and commissioned him to ministry while Elisha was working. You notice he wasn't, Elisha wasn't sitting on the couch spending time on the cell phone. He wasn't doing that, was he? He was out in the field. He was working. So the point is, God likes people that are work. He likes people that are, don't, don't mind working. I guess the story is. But this mantle, the mantle he put on him was the symbol of Elijah's prophetic authority. It basically said, I call upon you to join me in my work as a prophet of God. That's what he was saying. Now, if you remember, now, Elisha, now his main purpose, Elisha's main purpose was to finish the work of Elijah and help restore Israel back during the dark time back to God because Israel had gotten away from God once again. Um, there, was, uh, there was some dark moments. There was, uh, they were full of idolatry and full of sexual immorality. So his main purpose, Elijah's main purpose, was to carry on the work of Elijah. Now, of course, that didn't happen overnight. And it, was, it said it's approximately anywhere between six to ten years. So you can guesstimate eight years he was in training before he had to take over for Elijah. So anyway, let's back up here. Let's go now. We can see that there's no, absolutely no doubt that Elijah and Elisha, if you know anything about their lives, they were both spiritually empowered. Now back in the day in Old Testament, um, the Holy Spirit didn't just come and resonate on the inside of everyone because they believed in Christ like it is now. But there were people that the Holy Spirit would come upon and God would plant the Holy Spirit in them. They would be full of the Spirit just like we are today. So it says there's no, absolutely no doubt that Elijah and Elisha were both spiritually empowered men of God who walked with God, who represented God, and showed us what covenant relationship with God looks like. What covenant faithfulness to God looks like through obedience to God. Both of them, Elijah and Elijah, of course, was obedience to God. So we are going to look at how Elisha serves, listen to me, as a preview of knowing God now in the new covenant through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit and how Elisha's spirit empowered ministry points forward, points forward to the spirit empowered ministry of Jesus Christ. In other words, Elisha was setting an example of how we as Christians are supposed to live being empowered or being spiritually empowered by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 2. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind tonight when you're listening to uh, things about Elisha. Elisha, that's what the Old Testament is for, is to see and, and look at these great men of God and how they lived not having the benefit or the, of the whole Bible. They didn't have the benefit of, of having the whole Bible, but they believed in God. Are you with me? They believed totally in the Father. 
So 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, I'm going to read 9 through 15. It says this, And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I may do for you before I am taken away from you. Remember, Elijah was getting ready to be taken from this earth. Elijah never faced natural death. He was one of two, I think, in the Bible that was raptured out of here. The other one was Enoch. Yeah, right. Enoch. The other one was Enoch. Um, but he, God took Elijah just straight out of here, right straight to heaven. Wow, wouldn't that be awesome? But it says here, and so it was when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what may I do for you before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said and answered, please let a double portion of your spirit come upon me. Now, I used to think, man, that was pretty arrogant of him to ask that. But the idea of a double portion in the Bible is one that means double blessing. It was typically used in the Old Testament to refer to the birthright or the inheritance received by the oldest son. Because back in the day, the oldest son will receive double portion of what the rest would get. So it was, I, I don't know if it was culture or what, but that was, it wasn't just him being arrogant. He was saying, I'm kind of like your child. I've been with you. I'm like your son. I want a double portion of your spirit to come upon me. Are you with me tonight? So let's look at this. Now remember, Elisha was already chosen he was already chosen to be Elijah's successor. So he wasn't asking to succeed Elijah. This was a request for the spiritual empowerment to fulfill what he's already been called to do. So let's pick up on this. Verse 10, so he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not, it shall not be so. Then it happened. So there was another thing. He had to be obedient to what he was told to do. And it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly, everybody say suddenly, a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up in a whirlwind into glory or into heaven. Man, what a sight. I'd love to see that. I can see it in the spiritual realm. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan River. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over on dry land. Hallelujah. Now, when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Now, remember, the Jordan River, you know, we think of a small river, we think of a creek, but the Jordan River on the average width was 100 feet. 100 feet. That's about the size of this first building from front to back. Or from side to side, I think it's close to 100 feet. But either way, 100 feet, that's probably good ways, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, even a ditch to part would be a miracle. <laughs> but... For Jordan River to part it and walk over and dry land, I guess he could say that he got what he asked for. Amen. Amen. So throughout the book of Kings, it is very apparent that Israel was still dealing with idolatry. Many people in Israel have rejected God and his covenant. But Elisha not only continued to serve as a prophet calling people back to a covenant relationship with God, but as a spirit-empowered man who walks with God, he represented God, and he demonstrated all of his faithfulness to God. So he was also serving as a preview 
of what it will mean, or what you could say he was serving as a preview of what it will look like to walk with God in the new covenant in Jesus Christ as we have today. Are y'all still with me? Because we are spiritually empowered just like Elijah and Elisha. We are spiritually empowered. We, think we have the same Holy Spirit living and dwelling in us that Elisha had upon him. Amen. Hallelujah. So Elijah, Elijah's ministry, which was spiritually empowered with the Holy Spirit, Elisha's life in ministry was empowered with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, his life in ministry, because he was the Holy Spirit, was the ultimate preview. Are you with me? Ultimate preview, at, and uh, I looked up preview, and I got a couple definitions I like here. It means advanced showing. Or it also means a sneak preview. And also it means a foretaste of something to come. But it also means an advanced showing of what's coming. Are y'all with me? Of what life with God should look like under the new covenant being spiritually empowered with the Holy Spirit. So as we get into this message tonight, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit that is on Elisha is the same Holy Spirit that is inside of us. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So when Jesus died on the cross, went to hell, and conquered death, rose from the grave, and he said, I will send back the spirit of truth. I will send back the Holy Spirit, which is power. My wife was talking about that. Send back the power of the Holy Spirit for you and I to do even greater works. Let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14 says, when you get there, say amen. amen. Most assuredly, I say to you, he, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. This is Jesus talking. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. See, what he was saying was, you can't do these works if I'm still on this earth. But if I go to my Father, I can send back the Holy Spirit and put him in you so you can do the same works I did and then some. Come on, some. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. And then it says, whatever. Everybody say whatever. 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 You ask in my name that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So when we're operating in that Holy Spirit, the Father is glorified. That's what he wants us to do. And it says in verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now we know anything means anything that is his will as far as in the Bible. Ask anything that is in agreement with the word, I will do. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus was encouraging his disciples to believe in him. What does that mean, believe? It means, to, it means to trust in. It means to rely on. It also means to cling to in faith. Cling to him in faith. Everybody say faith. Because of who he is. Then Jesus goes on and describes the benefits and the blessings that come to the one who believes. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't say the one who says they believe, the one who really believes. Jesus expected his disciples 
to succeed his ministry to be the successor and carry out his work that he began in this world, even in a greater magnitude. That's what he said. Did you hear that? Jesus promised that the disciples would do greater things than Jesus did. What are some of the things Jesus did? Well, he cast out demons. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He walked on water. He caused the blind to see, caused the lame to walk. So Jesus said that I'm not going to be here in the natural any longer, but I am going to send back the power. Not just the power, but he's going to send back enough power to do everything that he did and then some. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You got to believe it. I said, we got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Enough power to do what I did and then some. Hallelujah. It is the power that is given to us by the Holy Spirit. You don't believe it? Go to Acts chapter 1 8. If I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, But you, how many of you are here tonight? Well, that's most of you. But you shall receive what? Power. What? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judah and Samaria and to all the end of the earth. You shall receive power. In the Amplified Bible, it says you will receive power and ability. So you not only have the power, you have the ability to use the power. Are y'all with me? The Passion Translation says you will be seized with power. Hallelujah. You'll be seized with power. Seized means to take hold of. It means to take possession of. You're going to be seized with power. Amen? So let's go back to the, uh, notice here the similarities between Elijah and Elisha and Jesus and his disciples. Elijah told Elisha, I'm giving you enough power to do everything I did and then some. Because he asked him, he says, he actually said that a double portion of my spirit will come upon you. So what he's saying is, I'm giving you enough power to do the things I did and then some. Amen. Double portion. Hallelujah. So let's look at 2 Kings. Let's look at some of this, uh, this power. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. Hallelujah. It says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is what? Is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, so what happened was this, this lady's husband had passed, and obviously he had owed this guy some money, I don't know what for, but he was coming to reclaim what he was owed. So they had to give her what she had, which was her two sons. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? Notice that. He didn't, he didn't just say, okay, what well, do you need? I'm going to give it to you. Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. He didn't say that. He said, tell me what you have in the house. Tell me, no, he said, tell me what your seed is. Come on, somebody. Tell me what your seed is. What shall I do for you? Tell me what you have in the house. And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, immediately, go borrow some vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and do not just get a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all of those vessels that you have gathered and set aside the full ones. Hallelujah. So verse 5 says, so she went from him and shut the door behind her, 
and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when all the vessels were what? Full. And she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. <coughs> Excuse me. She said, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, listen to what he said. Go sell the oil and pay your debt and you and your sons live on the rest. So he didn't just bless her by what she owed. He gave her enough to live on. He didn't say go live tomorrow. He said go live on you and your sons the rest of your life. God. Notice that Elisha, through the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, multiplied multiplied tremendously what she had. She gave what she had and God multiplied it. <coughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The devil's trying to shut my voice. I promise you I'm not sick in any way. Mm. 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 See, somebody needs to take that right now. You need a multiplication in your life. Woo, hallelujah. She gave what she had and God multiplied it. Don't miss that. These scriptures teach us that, is, that God always has a plan. When you feel like you're at the end of the rope, there's always hope and there's always help. And there is hope because there is help. I said there's hope because you always got the help living on the inside of you. Nothing is impossible for God Almighty. Hallelujah. I said, y'all ready for another one? <laughs> Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. Mm, mm, mm. The spirit of Elisha. Oh, man, he didn't even have, he didn't, you know, he didn't ask God's permission. He, he knew the Holy Spirit was living on the inside of him. He knew the power he had in him. Hallelujah. Verse 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, this is what he's saying to uh, Elisha, Look, you have been concerned for us. This is what Elisha's saying. You have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Ashley, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then Elisha said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. My God. What power and authority Elisha had. He said, about this time next year, you're going to have a son. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived. Ah, oh, man. She conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come. Of which Elijah had told her. And the child grew. Some of you believing for a child, get a hold of this right now. This is the word. This is the Holy Spirit speaking right now in the name of Jesus. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said to his father, my head, my head. So, she, so he said to his servant, carry him to his mother. When he taken him and brought him to his mother, he set her knees till noon. He, she, he set on her knees till noon. She set the child on her knees until noon. Then he died. Let's go to, I'm going to skip a little bit. Let's go to verse 32. I'm skipping around, but it says this. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. And he went in there, shut the door behind him, and it was just the two of them. 
And what did he do? Pray. He prayed to the Lord. In verse 34, he says, And when he went up and he lay on the child, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. When he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, sometimes you got to just do what the word from the Lord tells you to do. You know, we would look at that and say, What in the world are they doing? It's called crazy faith. <laughs> and when he went up and lay on the child, he put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. Elijah was determined. He stretched himself out on the child. And the flesh of the child became warm. <laughs> Hallelujah. That means blood started flowing. He returned, walked back and forth in the house. And didn't see enough results that he wanted. So he stretched out himself on him again. I said he stretched out on him again. And then the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. Shh. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to God. Immediately the child was resurrected from the dead. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit, which, by the way, oh, you've got that on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I skipped the whole page. I was trying to think, what in the world am I doing here so fast? Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I said, glory, glory, glory. 2 Kings 4, 8, I'm going to back up a little bit. It says, Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. Oh, you know what? That's part of the same story. That's the bottom of the story. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I got all mixed up. The Holy Spirit might have messed me all up tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, 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 thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Man, we have got to get our belief a little bit higher. You've got to believe. Don't let nothing distract you or contaminate your faith. Because the Holy Spirit is able. That means if the Holy Spirit is able, then you are able. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's all stand tonight. We're going to pick up on this next Wednesday. My goodness. Nothing is impossible with God. We can use these examples, you know, how we are supposed to walk and live by faith. And we certainly see how Elijah and Elisha walked and lived by faith. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We pray those that are watching tonight, Father God, maybe they don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe they need to rededicate their life. Maybe they just need some encouraging that that God is with them, that Holy Spirit is there living on the inside of them to be their helper, to lead, guide, and direct every way we should go. We should do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for those that are here tonight, Lord, and we just pray that whatever they need from you tonight, Father God, that they have it. It belongs to them, and they'll take possession of it. They'll take authority over it in Jesus' name. If you're watching today and maybe you're here tonight and you want to receive this Lord as your Savior, you've never received Christ as your Savior or you want to rededicate your life to Christ, our altar is open for you. There's no better way. Your life is going to be better when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. When you follow Him, your life is better. Amen? Amen. Let's all repeat this after me. Those that are watching online, if you want this Jesus we're talking about, repeat this. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart now. 
And I believe that you died on the cross and three days later rose from the grave. If you, see, if you really truly believe that and you said that and confessed it, you're now born again into the kingdom family of God. And I want you to write us, call us, and let us know. We'll get some information to you. And uh, we're going to turn it over to Kim right now. Y'all got something? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.